Ciao, everybody. This is Bruce Tate coming at you from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Well, with James Gray, I'm the author of this book, Designing Elixir Systems with OTP, and I hear that you're going to be doing it at your local meetup. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's happening in the book. So just kind of walk through chapter to chapter and tell you some of the things to watch. So the first chapter that you're going to get to is the getting started. And that'll basically walk you through a really interesting look of OTP, but we actually won't build it with OTP. We'll build it with uh, raw primitives in Elixir. And I think it's a pretty cool look. So that'll give you a sense for how everything works. And the rest of the book, frankly, uses one sentence. So I can tell if you're following my instructions. So repeat after me. Do fun things. I'm serious now. Everybody repeat after me. Do fun things. Better. With big, loud worker bees. So repeat that. With big, loud worker bees. That's right. Do fun things with big, loud worker bees. You know, worker bees just like that. So why did I get you to remember that sentence? Well, it's a great mental mnemonic to understand the layers of a typical OTP system. The do is like data, F for functions, tests, and then boundaries, life cycles, and workers. And so let's talk about what to look for in each one of those chapters. So in the data piece, I'd like you to pay attention to the idea that Elixir is a functional language. And so the data structures are a little bit different. And since the data structures are immutable, we'll be working them with an, working with them in a slightly different way. And then, so there's a there's an Elixir chapter that basically walks you through the Elixir data structures, and then there's a, a chapter where we actually layer the data as if we would be using an application. So we do a simple tic-tac-toe board, and then we walk through that that data layer. And the second the second thing is fun for functions. Do fun things. So the functions, we're actually talking about the functional core. And that's that's the piece without all the process machinery. It's an isolated API that really presents a clean interface for the boundary layers to use. And we'll talk about those in a second. And tests, we could actually have put either in the front of the book or the back of the book. We chose to focus the tests on the isolated conditions, and that's a nice thing to do so that as, as you do things like property-based testing, a great place to do that is the functional core. So you can make sure that everything is working like you expect it to, and then, and then you can move on with confidence to the boundary layers. So do fun things is together is the core layer. Now, big loud wildebeest is a little bit different than you might have seen OTP presented before. And the main reason is that loud word. Remember that that was life cycles. And you probably expected me to say something like, oh, I don't know, uh, like supervision or handling failure. But we decided that a, a better way to present those concepts is life cycle. And, and I'll tell you why now. So the boundary layer is where all the process machinery is. When I said that we were going to build with the process primitives and a, a tiny little OTP, well, this is the process piece. This is where we're basically running a service in a side-by-side -side process, and we're going to use the process to remember data. And so after you have that piece done, and that's really your, um, your calls and your casts, if you're familiar with OTP. If you're not, don't worry about it. We've, we've got your back. But if you're familiar with that, these are the place that you'll actually consume those pieces. And you'll actually uh, start to present uncertainty in this layer. So in, in the core layer, you're dealing mo with mostly with pipes so that the composition is really clean. But once you move into the boundary layers, you're, you're moving to the realms of widths and you're composing data that way. And we'll show you how that works. And then the life cycle the, the loud piece, the life cycle piece is, is really where we get the magic of OTP. This was the genius of Joe Armstrong when he basically took the computer and he said, well, if it doesn't work, did you try turning it off and on again? 
Uh, so if you've ever seen the IT crowd, that's a that's a British comedy that should be required viewing for, for this, this meetup. Um, if you haven't seen that, go see it. But the idea is that you can get pretty amazing reliability by when things break, just shut them down and bring them up clean. So if you handle life cycle, if you can turn something off cleanly and turn on cleanly, then you also get restart or failover for free. And we'll talk about how that works and some of the options so that really with OTP, all this failover, all these capabilities come from just a few interesting pieces of configuration and knowing how to layer the applications together. And then the last piece is worker bees. And that's really how the pieces of an OTP application work together. So how do you layer on your persistence in, in a design like this? Well, it's a little bit different. How do you plug something like this into a live view or a scenic? Well, some of those are already OTP applications and you just have to learn how to settle them in. So we'll talk about the different ways of consuming machinery. So we're so thrilled, James and I are thrilled that, that you're going through this together um, and, and that you're using this book. It's a bit of a dream of ours to, to work together on something like this and it's a great thing to share with you. Thank you so very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.